The word is transmedium. Transmedium craft can operate on both sea and land and can quickly transit between the two. That kind of technology is the basis of the U.S. Marine Corps amphibious warfare capability. But what about transiting between air and water, like a pelican diving for a fish and then getting airborne again? The tactical advantages are obvious. Agility in the air and stealth in the water. But the engineering behind getting there is complicated by the basic fact that water is 800 times denser than air. A hybrid solution is a tough problem to solve in that airplane fuselages are designed with weight in mind and couldn't survive the pressure of being submerged in several hundred feet of water, while submarines have very strong hulls that, in general, make them too heavy to fly. But these inherent limitations haven't stopped the U.S. Navy from trying to field an air-sea transmedium craft starting in the 1950s when they built two diesel-electric cruise missile submarines known as the Grayback class. The Greybacks could carry four large Regulus II missiles, which were turbojet-powered cruise missiles. After that, the Navy built a single Halibut-class nuclear-powered submarine that could carry five Regulus. But neither of these classes of subs were transmedium platforms. Unlike modern submarine-launched ballistic missiles, these missiles were not fired while the subs were submerged. They were fired on the surface using a ramp on the bow. The first flying submarine was created by American defense contractor Donald Reed in the 1960s, but due to insufficient power, it could only hover for a short period of time. More recently, in 2008, DARPA published a request for designs that outlined a list of requirements a flying submarine would need to be able to meet in order to be an effective weapon in a near-peer conflict. This video is sponsored by World of Tanks. World of Tanks is free to play with over 100 million players worldwide and for PC. World of Tanks has more than 600 tanks, destroyers, artillery, light, medium, and heavy tanks. There is always a new way to play. You can drive your tanks across open fields and deserts, climb steep hills, sneak through forests, and play your matches in urban or industrial zones. There are over 40 arenas. You have the full ability to gain experience, modify, and upgrade your tanks, creating a steel beast that's ready for any challenge. And the best part of the game is it's historically accurate. The models and vehicles have characteristics that make you feel like you're inside a real tank. Download World of Tanks using the first link in the description. When you register, use the code TANKMANIA to get for free 7 days of the premium account, 250,000 credits, the premium tank Excelsior, and 3 rental tanks for 10 battles each. Check out World of Tanks merch on Amazon. The store link is in the description. A U.S. Navy 2010 study largely leveraged DARPA's concept of operations for a submersible aircraft aimed at transporting special operators. Not only did the flying submarine need to be able to deploy from existing Navy platforms, it also had to be able to land and take off unassisted from the surface of the water with an in-flight range of 400 miles or more and it needed to be able to transit at least 12 miles once submerged and loiter undetected for up to 72 hours. The study determined that a flying wing slash blended body design was best suited for operating both above and below the waves. With all those variables and factors in mind, the Navy came up with two flying submarine designs. The first design, called Variant 1, had a 92-foot wingspan and a total weight of 37,000 pounds. It was 36 feet long, could carry a 750-pound payload, and cruise at speeds of 200 miles per hour while airborne. The second design, called, wait for it, Variant 2, was similar, but had a larger 109-foot wingspan, a shorter overall length of 34 feet, and the same speed and payload capabilities despite a slightly higher overall weight of 39,000 pounds. Both variants of the flying submarine concept were to operate at depths of nearly 100 feet and be able to take off and land on specifically designed inflatable floats. After testing a scale model, the Navy's report concluded that, quote, feasible vehicle concepts can be generated using current technology and materials, end quote, to design and build a real special operations flying submarine, but that capability hasn't been fielded, or if it has, it's a black program that hasn't been seen publicly. However, the Navy's efforts did yield an interesting bit of advice from the engineers directed towards any future endeavors. Build a submersible aircraft, not a flying submarine. The bottom line is planes do better underwater than submarines do above it. In 2018, another DARPA-sponsored research project conducted at North Carolina State University created a, quote, 
Seabird inspired fixed wing hybrid UAV slash UUV system, end quote, that successfully conducted both air flights and submerged operations that demonstrated, quote, egress from water, flight in air, ingress into water in each flight, and water locomotion, end quote. From that project, the Navy created a requirement for an unmanned aerial vehicle that could be launched by its converted Ohio-class guided missile submarine at depths of up to 150 feet. And Lockheed Martin developed and patented the Cormorant, a stealthy jet-powered drone that could be both launched and recovered by submerged submarines and carry a 1,000-pound payload in its modular bay. The current status of that program is unknown. Build a submersible aircraft not a flying submarine. Understanding that advice, the trick here remains the ability to efficiently move between mediums. A recent University of Oakland demonstration showed one way to tackle the problem. The drone flies into the water in what we'll call a controlled crash. Ballast tanks fill with water and drag it below the surface. Once fully submerged, one of the tanks vents enough to tilt the drone 90 degrees to orient the propellers horizontally. Now it's a submarine. Once it's ready to get airborne again, the tanks vent enough to get the propellers completely out of the water, and at that point, the drone has enough power to create the thrust required to break the surface tension of the water. Other concepts have shown additional ways to do this. The website Interesting Engineering reports that Spear UAV, an Israel-based manufacturer, has unveiled a quadcopter drone called 9X103 UW UAS, that can be launched by a submarine without having to surface. The drone is housed in a tube that breaks the surface, and once that happens, the drone blasts in the air like a mortar round. Basically, the 9X103 UW UAS can give a submarine targeting information well beyond the range limitations of the onboard periscope. And finally, reports recently emerged that Chinese scientists have developed their own version of a flying submarine drone. These reports also hint at the fact that the main military application of this technology is to go after U.S. Navy aircraft carrier strike groups. Keep in mind that a U.S. Navy carrier strike group is trying to solve a bunch of problems while the Chinese Navy is only trying to solve one. Take out the American aircraft carriers. Their theory assumes that the multi-layered defense system of an American strike group can take down almost half of the approaching aircraft, missiles, or conventional drones. However, they figure that even a small number of transmedia vessels, with their ability to submerge when identified by radar and emerge again to avoid sonar, can overwhelm the defender's targeting problem. At a glance, that concept seems valid, considering that the U.S. Navy deals with the air, surface, and subsurface pictures more or less separately in terms of warfare commander responsibilities. So a system that can move quickly between those mediums is bound to cause confusion in the heat of battle. The design concept is that when the drone reaches the water's surface, two wings that fold over its back extend, which gives it a top speed airborne of nearly 75 miles per hour, roughly twice as fast as the typical drone powered by rotor blades. And according to a report in the Chinese Journal of Electronic Optics and Control last month, if a transmedia vessel can fly at a speed of more than 93 miles per hour, it would have a survival rate of close to 100% when launched from a distance of 62 miles. Another researcher, who asked not to be named because of the sensitivity of the emerging technology, told the South China Morning Post that they were working on a transmedia design that can fly supersonic. All of this has to concern U.S. Navy warfighting planners. More on this topic as the information becomes available, so if you're not already a subscriber, click on the button so you don't miss anything. Thanks again to World of Tanks for sponsoring this episode, and I look forward to talking to you again very soon.